So yes, I'm Tiffany Ashley Bell, the executive director and founder of the Detroit Water Project. Um, so essentially, last year, I read about how over 100,000 people here in Detroit were about to have to experience life without running water. Um, if you live here, you're probably, you're probably already very familiar with this. But this is Latia. Latia is a single grandmother here in Detroit. And she has been a caretaker here for the last 14 years or so. Um, she's raised, she's a grandmother and stuff like that. But this time last year, she had to go on medical leave um, to do some health issues and stuff like that. And that'd be all fine, except for this was unpaid medical leave. And she had grandkids she had to take care of. In addition to three other kids that were not hers that she adopted because her best friend died. And so, because she couldn't, you know, she wasn't paid for medical leave and stuff like that. She couldn't afford rent or basic utilities like water. But it turns out, though, that over 35 million other households in the United States experience the same thing, where people have problems pretty much understanding how they're going to afford their water bills and their utility bills from one, from one, from one month to the next. Um, and I found out about this, like I said, last year as a Code for America fellow working with the city of Atlanta on open data and procurement. But I read about this in the Atlantic with people here in Detroit having to deal with how they're going to pay their water bill when they don't have jobs and things of that sort. And the city was not exactly doing much to help people out with that sort of thing. And I thought that was pretty crappy, considering I was walking around in Atlanta City Hall at that time and just saw the workings of City Hall and what they thought of people and policy and stuff like that. I thought it was pretty shady that a city-run water company is able to just turn people off without considering that this is a single mother without a job or this is someone who is on disability and can't afford the water bill and they weren't trying to help people really and truly. Um, so I wasn't exactly content to just sit there and just be like, oh, that's so sad and not do anything about it. Um, pretty much a very action-oriented person, programmer by training and stuff like that. So I want to build and actually do things. And so... I do what I normally do when I'm outraged about something. I usually go to just, just go to Twitter. And this time I asked what people here did when they didn't have water. And none of the answers really uh, were moving to me. So my co-founder at the time, she said, I would actually help, help someone with a water bill if I could pay that bill directly for them. And I didn't really know what that meant at the time. But what we turned it into in four short hours that same night that we read about the story was the Detroit Water Project. It went from being this really, really janky website here to what it is now. Um, but we built this in four short hours just using Bootstrap and Heroku and a bunch of other free services like GitHub and stuff like that. And the, the goal was to find people who needed help with their water bills and match them to folks all around the world who wanted to just give $5, $500, whatever they could afford to help people with their bills here. Um, and it was not based on you know, like there being any sort of overly special or tight considerations for your usual social service programs and stuff like that. We just wanted to help folks and get their water turned back on as soon as we possibly could. So, um, and I'll explain a little bit more like how it works a little bit later. Um, but essentially we match people who need help with their water bills to people all around the world who want to help, which is five bucks or whatever they can actually afford. And we ended up giving this money directly to the utility company on their behalf and getting their water turned back on or preventing it from being turned off in the first place. And so since July of last year, we've paid over 230 grand in water bills to Detroit and Baltimore, just from regular people giving whatever they could to help over 900 families there to either, oh, thanks. Thank you, thank you, thanks. Um, just to help folks out, regular people helping regular people. Um, and again, in Baltimore, we've saved over 40 houses from water bill foreclosure just since February and launching there. Because again, and we didn't know any of this stuff when we started, but you can actually lose your house and your kids over your water bill. And I was pretty surprised and again, disgusted and did a lot of cursing when I found that out. Um, but it's just, it's pretty crazy some of the stuff that goes on behind this. Um, but a lot of what we've amassed is just a bunch of data about people and their situations and especially like their utility data. So what we want to do with that is just to design targeted interventions for people over time and help them avoid being in this situation in the future. And it's, a lot of people come to us with different reasons for why they need the assistance. So some people may have had a leak that they couldn't afford, that sudden spike in the bill. Or some people long term hadn't been paying the bill because they didn't have a money, the money to, so they didn't have a job to pay that bill. Um, 
And we think that there are different, since there are different root causes for why people don't pay, we think that they should all be addressed differently. So over time, it's not the goal to just keep paying bills and hope for the best for people. Um, but we want to use the data that we have to, to match people to local community organizations to help them with things like employment, foreclosure prevention, legal aid, and you know, leak repairs and stuff like that. And I mentioned legal aid because we found out that some people, um, they were paying their utility bill to their landlord, and the landlord wasn't actually paying the bill, but they ended up with the shutoff notice, ironically. And so that calls for legal aid. Uh, but we also want to just use like common sense, of course, data science to help utility companies identify people beforehand. I mean, I've had a conversation with the water department director here, um, actually around the same time last year, and she claimed she didn't know who these people were ahead of time, which I wanted to be polite and not say certain things, but Joe Biden calls that malarkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and because we've seen these things. We see in people's data the patterns that says, you know, this person was paying consistently until six months ago. What happened? You can reach out to them, and, it, and when you see those sorts of patterns, and just say, how, how are you? What's going on? And stuff like that. Um, and we want to do that for utility companies. And so, but if you live here in Detroit, this is probably familiar. This is the uh, water department website. So what we do when someone applies is we take this, we actually go and we take their account number and we scrape all this data from the utility company website. And we use that to sort of analyze whether or not they need help and like when, you know, like I was saying before, their payment pattern suggested that they may have needed help. Because some people, they'll do things like make partial payments when their bill is a certain amount or whatever. And we can sniff all that sort of stuff out and actually determine if they need the help or not. And so we do that. And luckily, I was a math minor in college in, <laughs> in addition to a computer science major. And so like this is some of my, uh, my math from around Christmas last year. But this is what we use to pretty much help people get really, really fast decisions. Um, this is not foolproof. And so when someone is denied, for example, We'll go in and we'll look at the application ourselves and just say, is this an actual uh, case of need or not? Um, and this is actually the obligatory it works screen screenshot. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and so I mean, one of the more interesting and more important things to me though about all this data is just using this to sort of spur people to advocate for themselves and to drive change. Um, because one of the more interesting things is that I, I didn't know this when we first started, but there's just so much public policy that's wrapped around utilities. And it's kind of obvious in retrospect, but just like some of the effects are crazy. Like I was saying, people losing their kids and their houses over water bills. Um, but I want to use some of the data that we have and find ways to anonymize it and things like that and show that to people and help them advocate for themselves. And so, um, and help them ask questions of their leaders here. And so, one of the things I talk a lot about um, is this map here, and this is actually from, this is an older map of ours, from around earlier this year, like January or something like that. And, but in July here, the Detroit City Council approved a 7.5% rate increase in water bills. And I was curious of those city council members that voted yes for that rate increase, how many of them had constituents in our program where those people needed help? And so what you're seeing here is this a very rough map of um, the most dense areas, for example, are where those city council members actually voted yes for the rate increases. And it's kind of like why. We've never made this map public because there's a lot of like cleanup we have to do around it. But it's just a question I want to help people here ask and have them go to their city council members and just say, here's this map. These are all my neighbors in your district. Why are you raising rates? Like, why does this make sense? And of course, they say things like, well, we need to you know, protect the financial situation of the city and stuff like that which makes sense, but you're doing it off the backs of people that already can't afford bills as it is. And so what do you propose to do when you have this many of your constituents in areas that can't pay the bills? And it's, I always think it's interesting how in these two areas, like these two council members voted no against the rate increases. They don't have as many people as these other folks do. Um, but again, like the goal is to not keep paying bills. It's just to that's a stopgap measure to help people that need the help right away or um, to help them in the future. But going forward, what I want for this is just like legislation nationally or a state level or wherever it needs to happen to prevent people from being shut off, whether it's water or electricity or whatever it is, but mostly water in our case, if they can prove financial hardship. These are not folks that like take their utility money 
and go shopping and things like that. These are folks that actually don't have it as it is in the first place. We want protections for them to be able to say, like, I am actually experiencing financial hardship. Do not turn me off. Because there are folks that we've encountered that have lived for like a year or more without running water in their houses. And I met people in Baltimore that don't have either water or electricity. We're talking about 2014, 2015 in the United States of America, so-called superpower, wealthiest country in the world, yada, yada, yada. Folks are living like this. Um, and I think we can, I, I know we can do better as a country. So I want this kind of thing in place. Uh, but I'll leave you with this. I'm actually, I think LBJ is a kind of a funny president. He's always standing up for people. But I think um, he talks about the Great Society and sort of the war and poverty from way back when. But there's this quote I found from his Great Society speech that talks about poverty and how to solve these sorts of things and the kind of thing that's necessary. So he says the solution to these problems, and that's poverty he's talking about, does not rest on a master program in Washington, nor can it rely solely on the strained resources of local authority. They require us to create a new concept of cooperation, a creative federalism between the national capital and leaders of local communities. And I think that what we're doing here is just an example of how that can happen and sort of, you know, greasing the wheels for people to advocate for themselves and work together to prevent sort of the, the end results of poverty, like people living without running water and electricity. And when they, when they go to work and they have issues that they, everybody deserves water, if you ask me. It's their human right, basically. And there are folks that vehemently disagree with that, and I don't really care to hear from them sometimes. But, and I don't mean it that way, but I think of it as, even if you don't think that water is a human right, it's a biological need, so that should protect it in itself. Um, and so I just think that this is a nice way of thinking about that. But, I mean, going forward, I would ask that, you know, don't just say, oh, this is cool, and that's nice that you did that. But, you know, actually give 5 or $6, whatever you can, and help someone out. Or volunteer. We always need, like, legal help or people to talk to people that call us for assistance or whatever. Um, or just even hack. Like, if you're a developer, we always need development talent that's reliable and committed to helping us out. And even some of those opportunities are paid, as a matter of fact. So, you know, go to DetroitWaterProject.org and you can help out that way. So, thank you.